Okay, we've worked really hard on our animation. We outputted it as a GIF. The, our animation works, we like it. We saved it as our stage file, knowing that we made a bunch of frames, possibly out of a lot more layers than we have frames, because each frame is a composite of many different layers turned on, at least in my case. So now what we're going to do is we're going to change this. <laughs> So instead of it being um, all the assets layered up and used in different ways, both setting assets, character assets, we are going to reverse the process. We are going to click on the, uh, the window options for timeline. And instead of what we might have did, done before, which was make frames from layers, we are going to flatten the frames that we have into layers. Right? This is like making a flipbook out of your animation. So when you do that, Photoshop makes a whole new set of frames, however many you have, as new layers on top of your existing layers. So then that makes my file even bigger. It makes it 1.51 gigabytes. But I don't need anything underneath frame one anymore. So I'm going to select everything underneath frame one by holding down shift and selecting all of it, and then just hit delete. I think I have something locked. I have a few things locked, so I need to unlock them. And then I can hit delete. Or drag them to the trash. Okay, so now I have frame 1 through 37. Just to be safe, let me play it through, make sure it works. It should be the exact same. But now my layers look very different. Now each layer is a full 100% opaque picture. It's like a picture book of my animation. Okay, now that we've done this and it works, I'm going to save it as something else. So I'm gonna say file save as, and instead of the stage file, I'm gonna call this Carl Assignment 5 Refined Storyboard. Helps if I spell it right. Now that refined storyboard is a lot smaller. It's only 223 megabytes. Whereas my, my stage file to animate was a gig and a half basically. And what's great about this is I actually don't need these frames anymore. In fact, before I can go any further with my refined storyboard, which is why we need to save it with a different name, I have to trash all of these frames. So I select them all, drag them down to the trash, and then I can close the timeline. But what I have here is each piece of film, right, for my animation as an individual layer. So what I'm going to try to do is recreate my storyboard using my, my film stills from my animation. So the first thing I do, and I'm going to keep it at this resolution, but I, I need to make a print resolution file. So I'm going to grow the canvas around my image. So remember, I wanted you to use one dimension. Your smallest dimension was eight inches, right? So we're going to go to image canvas size and we're going to change the eight inches into 30 inches for the height this is growing space around it and i'm going to make the width 40 inches but because mine's quite widescreen i might even need to make it more i'll, I'll see soon so 30 by 40. there we go so now think of this as i've made a flip book I've torn out each page of the flipbook of my animation. Now it's a stack of playing cards. I have that stack of playing cards resting on a table. Right now that table has a checkerboard tablecloth. That checkerboard tablecloth is really annoying. So I'm going to make a new blank layer. And I'm going to say edit fill with a nice clean white tablecloth. That's honestly just for us, right? Just so we can see things clearly because the empty checkerboard would still print out as white. Now I'm gonna drag that white background layer behind my whole deck of cards. And this is me um, adding cards to the deck. 
right? And you see how they're perfectly centered in the middle. So this is the first layout tool within Photoshop. If you grow a canvas around your image, then you know your image is perfectly centered. There is no other way to just be certain that your image is perfectly centered. Now we're going to use some of the other layout uh, tools. This is my deck, but you know how um, like card games will sometimes have little compartments in the box to help you set the cards perfectly in certain areas? We need that because we need to turn this pile into a three-on-three -three stack. So what I'm going to do is have my rulers turned on, which you can do with Command-R. And with my rulers turned on, I'm going to go to the Move tool. I'm going to click on the ruler. I'll start with the verticals and then drag out a guide. Okay, so we're going to start using guides. I want to be on one of my frame layers because if I'm on my frame layer, my guide will automatically stick to the sides of it. Right. And these guides are left over for my animation. So I will go ahead and rebuild them here in case you don't have them. And that was just from when I cropped my animation. So I build the guides. I build a nice tight box all the way around my deck of cards. And I know I want to deal some up here, some 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 here, but I don't want them to touch. I want them just like a comic book to have a really defined gutter between each picture. So here are the other layout tools in Photoshop. I'm going to go to view. This is the same place you would turn your rulers on. And I'm going to go to show and I'm going to say grid. And the shortcut for that is command um, apostrophe. So our grid shows us inches, because we have it set in our preferences for inches. And because my smallest dimension is 8 inches, that's a nice clean difference. So what I'm going to do is go one full inch, so four of these little squares, and make a new guide on the top and bottom. It can be a little difficult to see while the grid's out. Now, all of our dimensions might be different unless you did an eight by eight square, right? And if it's not by an even inch, then you might have to just estimate a little bit. So I have basically a, a half inch here. So I'm gonna try to go out a full inch to the side. So it means I go a half inch. to about there. And then I'm gonna do that on the other side as well. So the equivalent of a full inch on each side. Okay, by putting that gutter in, now I can turn off the grid. And you can toggle that on and off with command apostrophe. Right? Now I can see that I have perfect gutters all the way around my centered stack. Now it's easy to know what to start with. Usually your first storyboard frame will be your first frame. So I can take frame one and I can use the move tool and I can just drag and drop it right there and it should snap to the guides. So we'll hold it in place just like a card box. Now I can turn on frame two and decide, do I want that next? No, I need the bug to be in the next frame. So I need to go up and deal in the stack until the bug's there. And I have a few that I can choose for the bug, but I think this one maybe. So I'm gonna take that frame, frame four, select that layer, move that up to be the next panel. So basically I'm deciding which images to use to best tell the story. And then the bugs near the middle and the character pops out. So I need to skip ahead quite a bit in my animation. And here are the characters starting to pop out and the bugs, the bugs coming up. So I think, yeah, this is the frame I want, frame 12. So in my animation, I took 12 frames to get to this part of my storyboard. But here you can tell, okay, the bug is moved. and my character starts to move as well. Okay, next, moving to the next line. This is where things start to happen pretty quickly, right? With the tongue coming out. 
So I think I need this frame. Frame 13. So it's going to be different for everyone's animation, but basically this is frame 12, this is frame 13. And then frame probably 15, this is going to be my center frame. Because it's the one where it's, it's clearest that the bug is getting eaten. Yeah. Or maybe even this one. I don't know. I'll do that one. Okay, so once I figure out which frame it is that's in the middle, I want to mark that with red. Just so I know, that's my center frame. Now everything that goes above that, I, I deal into its next place. So now a new large character pops up, so I might have to skip ahead again. I think this one works, frame 19. And then I have to turn off everything between the frame I moved and the red frame that's my middle, right? Okay, now, character eats, this character eats that character. So again, I have to kind of jump a little bit find the frame that tells that. I think that's a pretty good one. Maybe this one. Yeah, I'll use that one. Drag that down into place. Make sure that I didn't have anything extra hiding the one in the middle I want. Okay. Now the character starts to settle back down. Easy enough. I'll have this one. Move that into place. And you've worked so hard on this animation, it would be a real shame to have your storyboard just have little problems with it, right? So the most important thing for the layout is to make sure you have very even gutters, that something's not just a little bit off, or that you're not just trying to eyeball it. So you use the grid and you use your guides to get a clean storyboard. So this is my storyboard. Okay, so now, once you have it, you're going to save that as your refined storyboard, as a PSD. Remember, that's different than your stage or your assets file or your GIF animation file. And then you're going to save this as a JPEG as well. And even though it's 30 by 40 inches, watch what happens when I go to image size. If I don't resample it, which means I use the exact pixels I've given, and I make it fit to 10 inches, it gives me basically 8 by 10 by 600 pixels per inch, which is plenty for printing. Or I could even go up to 14 by 11 inches and still have plenty for printing. And I can even go up to basically 16 by 20 and still be a professional print quality. So even though we did an animation that was made for screen quality, we can have a print like a poster print of our storyboard showing our animation storytelling at that same resolution. Okay, so now I'm going to save it as a JPEG. And I'm going to save that to the desktop because that needs to go to Photo Bucket. And now the three things that go to Photo Bucket are my storyboard animation sketch. So let me export that as a JPEG onto the desktop. Open up Photo Bucket here. Second thing, I want my refined storyboard JPEG. I'll mark these all with orange. And then I want my GIF animation that I've tested. And it all works. So these are the three things.